Hall presents to you What happens to you if you get coronavirus? The recent outbreak of coronavirus, which now has become a pandemic, made us all realize that diseases can affect anyone, regardless of race and ethnicity. The coronavirus situation is not hidden from anyone. It is today's hot topic, and it's pretty much all over the news. Our social media feed is filled with new information about coronavirus every other minute. And much of the panic out there is because of the fact that we don't really know what happens to us if we get infected with coronavirus. So we're going to tell you exactly what happens to you if you get coronavirus step by step. First, we need to know what is coronavirus, what determines when and how it jumps to humans and how infectious it will be. Since these viruses first emerged as a severe global health threat, researchers have been studying their molecular biology in an effort to answer such questions. Coronaviruses are enveloped, single-stranded RNA viruses, which means that their genome consists of a strand of RNA rather than DNA, and that each viral particle is wrapped in a protein envelope. Viruses all do basically the same thing – invade a cell, and take over some of its components to make many copies of themselves, which then infect other cells. Coronavirus is no exception. The virus multiplies in the respiratory tract and can cause a range of symptoms. So what symptoms will pop up on which day after you get infected? On average, it takes about 5 to 6 days for someone to show symptoms after becoming infected. However, some people who carry the virus remain asymptomatic, meaning they do not show any symptoms. Dr. Maria van Kerkhove, who has the WHO's Health Emergencies Program, tells us this. You have mild cases, which look like the common cold, which have some respiratory symptoms, sore throat, runny nose, fever, all the way through pneumonia. And there can be varying levels of severity of pneumonia all the way through multi-organ failure and death. Not all the people show severe symptoms. Patients who were severely ill show the cytokine storm. A cytokine storm is a severe immune reaction in which the body produces immune cells and proteins that can destroy other organs. This is why fibrosis of lungs happens so quickly in patients with severe disease. So what symptoms will pop up on which day after you get infected? Well, now we're going to use some stats to make it more clear for you to understand. The study examined the medical data of a 35-year-old man, the first case of infection in the United States. And the stats are as follows. Day 1 and 2. The first symptoms that appeared was a dry cough and flu, followed by a fever. According to WHO, the best thing you can do at this stage is to quarantine yourself in your home and not getting in direct contact with any person until the symptoms reside. By doing this, you're actually reducing the chance of other people getting infected by the virus. Also, going to a hospital for a checkup will further increase the risk of more people getting infected. So stay in your home, don't go to work. Your boss can spare you a few days, can't they? Day 3 On the third day of illness, he reported nausea and vomiting. Simply put, if you develop nausea and vomiting following flu and fever, it's the time you should get yourself checked for corona, according to the experts. Do remember to cover your face with a mask and not to touch anything while you go to hospital. Because you don't want to infect the people, do you? Day 4 to Day 6 Diarrhea and abdominal discomfort developed on the 6th day. So now the sequence of symptoms you get is getting quite clear, isn't it? Day 7 to Day 9 By the 9th day, the patient had developed pneumonia and reported difficulty in breathing. Most of the cases of coronavirus reported so far came for the checkup into hospital at this particular stage. Because this is the time people feel the severity of the disease. Actually, this difficulty in breathing is due to your lungs getting fibrosed. This fibrosis doesn't allow your lungs to expand fully and hence developing difficulty in breathing. By this time, the only way to save your life would be to put you on a ventilator. Day 10 to 12 
By the twelfth day, his condition had improved and his fever was subsiding. He had a runny nose, however. Looking at the stats, you can clearly tell that this COVID-19 is most harmful between 6th to 12th day. Day 13 to day 15. On day 14, he was asymptomatic, except for a mild cough. According to local media reports, he sought care on January 19 and was discharged from the hospital in the first week of February. So this is pretty much the whole pattern of illness that's going to develop in healthy people with great immunity. The pattern might be different in immunocompromised and elderly patients. Now talking about the treatment. At this moment, there is no vaccine to prevent coronavirus. The best way to prevent this pandemic is to avoid being exposed to this virus. Staying at home is being advised by WHO, NHS and CDC and all other healthcare authorities. During these circumstances, as individuals, we have moral obligations towards ourselves and others, including our families and those who are at great risk of catching this virus. The pandemic has prompted many countries like Italy, Spain and Iran to put their cities on lockdown. Families are staying inside homes. Hospitals are only attending severe cases due to limited healthcare supplies. At this moment, it is ethical for us to take care of ourselves and those who are not privileged enough. Now that we know what happens to our body when we catch this virus, it's easier for us to take care of ourselves and our families. We need to stop the blame game and take action. Don't be racist, don't be rude. And don't let the coronavirus panic exploit you to lose your moral compass and cease to think of the person next to you as a human being. Don't panic. Be ethical and, most importantly, a human being. I hope we all get over this situation soon. We are all in this together. Keep watching our videos for more updates and hang in there. We've got this. Subscribe to our channel before leaving. Bye-bye! If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss any of our videos. Bye-bye! See you soon with a new video!